what if I told you that the next game to be released within the franchise would make or break this series? You're probably saying, impossible. Who cares or it's even just a game? And you know what I say to that? You're probably right, but just hear me out. Gearbox has had a few previous successes with titles like Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Tales from the Borderlands. And I know, I know. Tales was developed by Telltale Games, but I'm still counting. With Gearbox's first Borderlands release, they saw universal praise as players and critics alike loved how they mixed RPG elements with FPS gameplay. Then, shortly after their first game release, they released Borderlands 2, which, to many, this game is considered a classic among classics, as 2012 was the year that we got Black Ops 2, Far Cry 3, Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? CSGO, and the greatest of all time, the goat of all goats, Clash of Clans. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the goat! The goat! No, but seriously, it was a stacked year, so the fact that Borderlands 2 is still considered one of the greatest of all time says all you need to know. But just when you thought Gearbox was done and they were out of ideas, boom, Tales from the Borderlands. And this game was also a smash hit with players and critics alike. Now personally, I'd rather play an actual Borderlands game, and they had you covered on that front as well, as the pre-sequel came out just a month prior to Tales from the Borderlands. But we'll get to the pre-sequel later. Now, with all this content and all these games released in such a quick and concise manner, it was only a matter of time before we got Borderlands 3. Right? There was a five year wait between the pre-sequel and Borderlands 3, and this, in my opinion, was the first failure on Gearbox's part, as they got their fan base used to frequent game drops, then left us hanging for five years. Speaking of failure, let's talk about what Gearbox has failed at in the past. Gearbox has had many previous failures, whether it be gameplay, writing, or balance related. So we're gonna talk about why that is and what happened. Let's start with the pre-sequel, shall we? Most of the Borderlands community I'd be willing to bet are based in the US. So when it was announced that the pre-sequel was being developed and written by 2K Australia, it was odd, but nobody really thought anything of it at the time. Until you realize that Americans don't necessarily understand Australian humor. So when the game launched, the writing just kind of fell flat with a big chunk of the fan base. And that's not all. The pre-sequel also felt too short for most players and lacked in the endgame department, something that is a huge no-no in the Borderlands games. Now, by no means am I saying that the pre-sequel was a failure, but what I am saying is that in my opinion, it was the catalyst that led us to where we are today. As dropping a controversial game and leaving your fans to debate it for five years is a recipe for disaster. As the longer the fans waited, the higher the expectations got and the harsher the debates became, which all came to a head with the announcement of Borderlands 3. The way you move, the way you feel. One kiss is all it takes. Fucking up on the fucking screen. Hype was at an all-time high, and then came the day that it was released. Players excitedly booted up their games to encounter constant menu glitches, bad frame rates, and a horrendous story. The launch of Borderlands 3 was disappointing to say the least, but this was all mostly cleared up and the post-launch content and DLC cycle then began. The post-launch content in my opinion was solid, aside from there being no raid bosses. The big problem with their DLC season was balancing, as Gearbox in some cases made top tier weapons completely useless like the Crossroads SMG after they removed its fourth pellet, just for example. Players hated these changes, which then led to backlash, and after all was said and done, Borderlands 3 was still looked at as the ugly duckling by the majority of the community. Gearbox wasn't done though, as almost three years later, they released Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. This game suffered from many of the same problems as the pre-sequel, with the game lacking content, being too short, and all around just not hitting the mark that the fans were hoping it would, further chipping away at what goodwill the fans had left. And then, boom. And I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. New Tales from the Borderlands came out and dropped a bomb of negativity and pretty much solidified the death of the future game stories. So after all this, you're probably thinking, well, it can't get any worse, right? Right? 
Personally, I believe between the writing taking a nosedive from Borderlands 3 until now, Wonderlands not being supported for very long after release, the exclusivity deals they had with Epic, and New Tales failing completely, the fanbase had almost all but given up hope for the future of the franchise. And I don't see trust being something that Gearbox can get back with a single game, unless Gearbox thoroughly communicates the reasons they make certain changes to the players, which leads me into my next point, the failure of communication between Gearbox and their players. In the past, we've seen so many developers fail at one major thing that every community needs, in my opinion, and that's developer communication. With the next installment of Borderlands, Gearbox needs to communicate changes like balance and endgame changes before they release them and give room for feedback from the players, as the reception to the balance changes in Borderlands 3 were mostly negative, with those changes now being labeled the nerf apocalypse. Personally, I think balance changes are fine as long as they are revealed beforehand, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, on to my next point, franchise fatigue. With everything that's happened in the past five-ish years, the community, I believe, is tired. Whether it be the horrible writing, bad balance, or community drama, they all contribute to franchise fatigue. And I would know, as I've personally seen this in my comment sections ever since I started YouTube. Anyways, speaking of drama, in most communities that aren't competitive like COD Zombies or Borderlands, drama usually isn't really a thing until the community slash YouTube side of things start to die. Obviously, this doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen occasionally. Personally, I believe that the Borderlands creators never wanted drama in the community because of the community backlash towards Borderlands 3. Alright, now let's talk about what happens if Gearbox's next game is a hit. If their next game is a success, then I believe we will see Wonderlands 2 a couple years later and then a live service spin-off much like Destiny that takes place in the Borderlands universe about 3 to 5 years after Wonderlands 2. But on the flip side, if the game fails, we could see Wonderlands 2 being scrapped completely and Gearbox moving on from the Borderlands franchise altogether, maybe even making a new IP similar to Borderlands instead of continuing the Borderlands franchise. I also think that Gearbox could just be used as a backup developer for other projects under Take-Two's umbrella, as if Borderlands fails to deliver, Take-Two would have to earn back the investment in some way, right? What better way than putting Gearbox to work on their existing IPs? All of this is just speculation, and I have no idea if any of this would or even could happen. But it's just some food for thought. Now, I want to hear from you. What's your take on the current landscape of the Borderlands franchise? Let me know in the comments below. But that's it for me. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button, as it helps me out a ton. I also have a Discord if you're interested. The link will be in the description. But that's all for me today. See you in the next video. I love you. Have a good day. Goodbye.